Howdy folks, today I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, estate sales, yard sales, and uh, a Simpson meter. I scored one finally. I've been keeping an eye out for them, but uh, they're, they're kind of a, they're not a rare find, but a lot of times they're in bad condition and you probably shouldn't buy them. So I was going to show you a little bit about what to look for in a good Simpson meter if you decide you're old school and you'd like to have one around like me. <laughs> <laughs> I love having a Simpson meter around. So this is uh, this is the baby right here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is just scored this last weekend, uh, yard sale and estate sale, hopping and running. And I already have some parts here for it because I'm going to do a repair on it so that I can get it working again. The first number one thing, obviously, would be to look at the casing to see if there's any cracks or anything. When you go to an estate sale too, uh, or a yard sale. And you're interested in you know thinking about buying something like this uh, pick it up and keep it in your hands until you're until you're 100 percent sure you're not going to buy it or something because if you set it down somewhere at a yard sale or an estate sale someone else will grab it and they'll pick it up and say hey i'm going to buy that and you know that's it's game over the first thing i noticed was the needle is nicely floating just by doing that i can see the needle is gently flopping back and forth a little bit in there which indicates the needle everything is still working is still good that way the other thing i checked immediately was this and it doesn't feel grindy it has a nice sharp snap you know to select your different uh modes on this particular meter now this is a very old meter uh you young fellows are probably wondering what would you want with that old black meter? well when we were electricians and we were in the heavy uh industry at that time here yes in north america uh, this was the go-to meter. In fact, you had to sign for this thing to get it out of a tool, uh, a crib, you know, crib store, tool shop, whatever. You had to, you know, actually put your name on a line in order to borrow this thing for an hour to go test something on a piece of machinery if you were having to deal with something. And this was the go-to meter, was the Simpson. This particular model is the Simpson 260, which was very popular in the industry. And also, uh, a lot of people uh, link this up with the old railroad, which Again, same thing, you know, the old railroads and that, this was the go-to meter for testing and checking circuits and stuff. Yeah, it's pretty miserable compared to these what these digital meters will do now, but in the good old days, this was the, this was it right here. Oh yeah, this is the baby. And the other thing I checked, of course, was these knobs and make sure they're not grindy. They're nice, they're smooth, they still roll back and forth nicely. Same with this, the selector was nice, sharp, you know, clicks and works easily. And like I said, there's no cracks and the meter's flowing. Well, that you could stop there, but the other thing too was the handle. It has the whole handle. It's a little rough shape, so it has been, you know, it has seen some days, but the handle was still in good shape, not broken. So great, you know, nice find so far. The next thing to do was to go find a, uh, got one right here, <laughs> standard screwdriver. If you're at a big tool uh, dump, like a, a state sale where they're dumping a lot of tools, it's easy to go find a little standard screwdriver and take the screw off this back, this small plate at the top, and just unscrew it and get in there. And the reason you're going to do that is this is the only other place where these meters are going to really get nasty really quickly. And I'll see if I can, I don't know if we have enough light for this one, but I'm going to show this to you. This is pretty, this is not good. Uh, it probably looks okay to the uh, average person, but I'm going to need to get some hydrogen uh, chlor uh, hydrogen peroxide, and I'm going to go in and get the acid. The battery from uh, that was left in here for years and years had gone to acid. All the acid was all over the place, and you can see the back of it there. It's not it's not great. It's 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 you know I've seen much worse where the acid had gone in and just basically eaten everything out. Plus. Uh, rust on these metal tabs where the batteries connect and stuff. There's also a 9 volt battery and there's also a big old, uh, I believe they, it's been so long, the big old D size uh, battery would fit on this side and that would power the meter for uh, doing, you know, continuity testing, you know, that kind of thing. If for voltage testing, the batteries didn't really matter because you're not using the battery side of the meter. But you also had a little fuse right here to protect you from uh, screw ups, I guess we'll say, because this will not allow you to put, uh, say, go reverse polarity or something. And again, this can be cleaned up, which is what I'm in the works of doing. The nine volt was totally eaten by the acid. So I uh, picked up for a couple dollars, a new uh, nine volt uh, battery system. So I'll be soldering this in and putting a new connection there. In fact, there's the old, 
see if I can get it out. Yeah, there it is. There's the old nine volt battery uh, terminals and they're like, phew, yeah, disgusting. Well, I mean, you know, you expect that because of old tools. The battery containment system that was used for the nine volt also has a lot of that acid down there. To get that out, again, hydrogen peroxide and a little Q-tip and get in there and just clean it all out kind of thing. And just, and then at some point, I will have to take some uh, light emery cloth and just probably touch these tabs up a little bit to make sure I get a good battery connection. So the meter is totally uh, usable. What's down here below is the control package side of it. So uh, later on, we'll probably end up opening this up and cleaning it up a little bit. But other than that, that's really what you're looking for in a Simpson meter if you're going to buy one. Now, price. That's the next problem. Uh, because estate sales are always overpriced, they were asking, you know, I think $40 for this thing in the condition it was in. And that's, that's not bad. But, you know, you don't have to pay it. And there was two of the meters here uh, at this particular estate sale. Two of the Simpson 260s. The second one was eaten up so badly with rust and contaminants that it was like, not, for, not even for a dollar. You know, this one here opened it up and it was like, okay, I can clean up and repair this one and I can get it going. And it seems to be, you know, click, click, click. Yeah, you know, pretty functional. The other thing I'm not going to worry about too much would be these banana connectors. A lot of times they're loose and it's just right here. The, this particular one, for some reason, the banana connectors here were still good. The probes are still good. The wiring itself is still soft, reliable. There's no cracking. There's no, you know, nothing bad going on there. So that was a, a bit of a bonus to the meter, but that was not a deal breaker because you can get a set of probes uh, pretty easily even to this day. You can still you know, shop around and find probes if you happen to replace something on the meter. The other thing that uh, you look for is the type of obviously the model, in this case the 260, which was a very popular model. I cleaned this up a little bit, believe it or not, from what it was. It was covered in dirt, gray. It had been laying on a shelf somewhere in the guy's house who had I, apparently, I guess, passed away. The meter looked like it had not been used for probably 20 years, maybe more, but everything was still tight, everything still clean. It was like, you know what, we can do something with it. And then the uh, estate sales generally on like a Sunday or something, they'll have like half price. So the meter then dropped to $20. Even at $20, I was still kind of, you know, eh, you know, I don't really need it. I have a ton of multimeters that are digital, that function, that use a pen light battery, whatever to go to uh, work with. But I thought, you know, just for nostalgia, I'd love to have an old Simpson kicking around from the good old days. So uh, $20, I, I bought it, I picked it up. Uh, one thing about uh, yard sale and estate sales, you probably, uh, you may, you would not have noticed with the show, but my tools have become, uh, it was funny, I was thinking about the other day, the tools in here are older and older tools than what I had, say, two or three years ago even. I had a brand new table saw in here. I sold it when I found a really good one at a yard sale. Then I sold, cleaned that one up, sold it, bought another one, bought another one. We're on, the, finally we found the one that I really wanted in the first place my whole life <laughs> and brought that one here and it's staying it's you know it's a keeper kind of thing uh welding i have my i've gone back 30 40 years with my welding i guess i got rid of my mig welders and went back to an old century dual mig welder that works way better and for i guess at that time i paid 25 dollars. i had to do a little bit of work use the 3d printer to make some new plastic parts for it but you know, it's a better machine and it is dual. It'll, it'll run flux and it'll run gas. So I was like, I'm happy with that. Uh, same with the chop saw. I got rid of the Ryobi and we have this old Attachee in here that's uh, a good 20, yeah, plus 20 years old. But it works very well, it's very precise. It's a good old, you know, it's a good old saw. And a lot of my tools, like I say, I guess 90% of my tools are probably now old tools that came from yard sales. I have less and less money invested in tools, but I have more and more tools available to me. I have two different router systems. I have a bandsaw, uh, sandblasters, and I've got a welding table, and just, you know, I've got lots and lots of stuff to keep me busy. Uh, this particular estate sale was way overpriced when I walked in, and there was lots of cowboys there walking around with cash in their hands, and I noticed that they weren't buying anything either because generally, uh, yard sale, usually pretty good. Estate sale, usually overpriced because the dealer's there and they want to make money on 
everything they sell. So that first day or two, Friday and Saturday sometimes, you just say, okay, I'm not buying, you know, I will not buy anything or I'll pick and choose. If I do find something that I think, you know what, this is kind of a bargain, but they missed on it. Sometimes you can scoop something, but it's hard to find those deals per se. And this was a classic situation where at $40, it was like, you know, I, I can live without a Simpson meter laying around because really it's almost a display thing at this point in time. But at the same time, it was like, uh, you know, I would like to have it. So for the 20, it was like, okay, I'll bite. You, you know, grew up with this sort of thing. And this was the industrial standard, also the railroad meter, as a lot of people refer to them. And it was just a, a great item to display on a shelf, perhaps, which I decided it would go up here. <laughs> and the good old Simpson meter. So I wanted to just talk about that a little bit today before we uh, get into this next issue. And that is we've got uh, two things happening again today. It's Thursday. It's the normal Thursday. So we do the giveaway. And then we're going to line something else up that was shown on the show in the last oh, couple of weeks, whatever, and do a giveaway. So, yeah, let's get started on that. Let's, let's, let's hang in here, but let's get going on that. Okay, so this week, Thursday, this is what we're drawing for. Really nice really nice <laughs> laser it's the longer ray 5 laser and we had it on the show a couple months ago and we were holding on to it here it is here all boxed up ready to go out to the uh person whoever's name comes out of the bucket and then we're going to start something else but uh this has been a two-week deal because i needed a, i needed a week off i think it was mental what do they call it mental health week or something it didn't work that way so uh I think it was mental health, but I don't think it was a good week. Yeah. Anyway, I've got several hundred uh, tickets in here with different, all the names of all the entrants that were at the gmx.com uh, email box, which I want to thank everybody for entering, or anyone that did enter. Thank you. You know, uh, we've destroyed the, uh, once again this morning, uh, we destroyed the email box completely, took everything out, deleted it, and then trashed, and then deleted the trash, and deleted that, you know, went back through until it was just no trace of anything that it was ever in there. So that's the way, that's the best way to keep all the privacy down to privacy. Right. Meantime, I got a big fatty old ticket here. And it's, I think I've seen this name before, but okay. We have a winner. Who's getting this? Okay, John, that's your first name and you're in Nottingham, Maryland. Wow, okay, John, in Nottingham, Maryland, congratulations, you're getting yourself a nice, shiny, almost, <laughs> almost brand new uh, Laser Ray 5. Uh, there might be a few of my fingerprints still on that bad boy, but, uh, you know, it'll be good. It'll all be good. <laughs> and we'll ship that out to you probably, if not Friday, it'll go out Monday, probably a priority post or something to you, so it'll get, get there pretty quick, and you will have a Laser Ray 5 at the door of your house. Until the Porsche Pirates take it, of course, but that's that's just normal, right? Hey, congratulations and thank you, John, for uh, entering. I'm going to put your name here with a piece of tape or something, uh, okay, just so we don't lose you. And get that out to you right away. I want to thank everybody for entering, like always. And mm, there we go. Bang. Good enough. So don't lose John. Now. We gotta start something new. So let's, when we come back in a second here, uh, get clean this up and then we'll start something new. Okay, we're back. It's summertime, so you might be taking a road trip this summer or vacation or something. And so uh, we're giving something what you might need. This is a, a jump starter and also an air compressor for your car. Or you could say use it for, you know, some maybe charging up your cell phone or running, I. I actually have USB lighting systems that plug in here that makes this thing super handy. Uh, this one came in about a month ago. We did a review about it. It is a very nice product for a pretty reasonable price, I believe. And we're, yeah, we're giving it away. And uh, facts, as soon as I figure out how to put all of this back in that little box, we'll get it out of here. But meantime, next Thursday, that's what we're drawing for. So between now and Thursday, you can enter the contest. And let's see one per household I'll just mention that again <laughs> and uh, just send us an email and for let's see what are we gonna do for a subject line here uh, let's do the word trip t-r-i-p trip 
That'll be your subject line in the email, and then just your name and address as if you were doing a return on an envelope for a postal code, and that's it. And if you don't uh, include your name and your address, you will be deleted. That's what we're doing, and this is a really nice item, and there's a nice little carrying bag with it. Also, I'll see if I can provide a link below, if I can find one, because I had a nice one for where you can find this uh, gadget. This thing is pretty cool. Flashlight, you know, all of it. It's just one box, and it has all this different cool stuff with it, and you'll be getting the bag with all the accessories and the uh, little manual that comes with it for instructions, and you will have just that much more luck with the car. Let's face it, uh, you know, jump in the car and the tires. That seems like that's the two favorites these days for auto problems on the side of the road. And of course, trying to find somebody that knows how to change the tire sometimes. Uh, anyway, this is what we're giving away. And so, one per household, and it will be sent to, I'll put it right over here, uh, ctrewards at gmx.com. I have one per household, and just your name and your name and address, subject line, trip, and hopefully you can get in on that one. And next Thursday we will draw for this one, and then we'll move to another product that has been shown or reviewed on the show. This one was shown, I think, about a month ago or so, and I set it aside. And I'll tell you the truth, it's been we've been so busy. It was like, oh, I need to get back to that so we can add that to a, a function, so we can have that as a you know, a giveaway. And like I said, it's a nice product. It is a real nice product. So somebody that needs it, hey. And uh, until then, it's 95 whatever it is in here today. Maybe, maybe 100. And over and out.